Amen. So we, we're going to do a little Bible study. Yes. This is church, y'all, right? Yes. Amen. We're going to do a little Bible study. We might do a little reference, but I believe the Lord wants to show us something. As a matter of fact, I'm sure God wants to show us something. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to a familiar passage of Scripture in the book of Genesis. You don't have to turn very far. <laughs> Genesis chapter number 12. Uh, reading verses 1 through 4. And if you would, is our custom if you would stand in honor to the reading of the word of the Lord. In Genesis chapter number 12, verses 1 through 4. The word of the Lord declares, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, as I'm going through this message today, I will use the more a formal name of Abraham, but Abram and Abraham are the same person. Yes. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, uh -huh. unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Right there, I'm blessed. Uh -huh. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Thus be the reading of the word of the Lord, and the Lord would help me to talk this morning. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God, God has, something has something he wants to show you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has something he wants to show you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now let me sit down too. God, I believe the Lord wants us to realize that there are promises that he has made unto us uh, that we must realize that whenever God makes a promise, we already have what God has promised. Now, when I say we already have what God has promised, that's true and it's not totally true all at the same time. I can hear you say right now, how can it be true and not true at the same time? Well, it's true because he said it, but it's not true because it's contingent right. upon your obedience. Right. All right. All right. And we're not going to get stuck there this morning. But the Lord, the word of the Lord declares unto us, if we were to turn over, and if you will just jot it down, you don't have to necessarily turn there, but if we were to turn over to the book of Acts chapter number 7, verses 2 through 4, uh, we would find that the call that God had placed on Abraham's life, or Abraham's life, it is the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts that rehearses it in the ears of the hearers. And Paul says to us in Acts 7, 2 and 4, he says, and he said, men and brethren and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharan. And said unto him, get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and come into a land that I will show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Sharan, and from thence, when he, his father was dead, he removed him into the land wherein ye now dwell. Uh, but there's something that we must understand, brothers and sisters, as I open up by making the statement, and that is that when God speaks a promise or he speaks something over our lives, it is essential that we obey the voice of the Lord completely. Everybody say completely. Because I know there are some people that feel like I've done 20% of what God said, so I should be able to get all of what God has promised. 
That, that's not true. That's not true. So we must be reserved to understand that when God makes us a promise, it will come to pass. Everything that is necessary for that promise uh, to be realized in your life is already steeped within what God has spoken. However, mm, yes, we have to participate in God's promise. All right. I don't want to get stuck right there. I, I heard somebody say it not too long ago, and I would have to agree, Sister Deborah, that every time we hear a prophetic word being spoken, Sister Kelsey, it's not all the time that we have pretending prophets. Sometimes we got lazy listeners. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we think God's got to do everything. And, and because we came to church and we heard the preacher say, take five nibbles and throw them over your shoulders, and after you do that, God is going to do something in your life. We got to understand that whenever God speaks something, oftentimes He speaks a set of instructions that go along with the promise. And it is kind of, it is, it is uh, 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 intention or contingent upon us, amen, participating in the, that's called the power of agreement. Yes, sir. Uh, whenever God says something to show that I agree, I move in faith in accordance to what God has said. I don't want to get stuck there, but I do want us to realize that when He speaks, we have to obey His voice. Amen. Completely. Now, Genesis chapter number 12. When we jump back to Genesis chapter number 12, amen, we will understand the Bible declares, verse number 1, Now the Lord said unto Abram, or Abraham, Get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house into a land that I will show you. So the first thing that God says to Abraham is something that is very significant to all of us today if we're going to experience and realize the promises that we continue to shout about. Nothing wrong with shouting about, but I don't know about you, but I don't want to just shout about them, Chris. I, I want to experience what God has for me. I, I, I do. I want to experience everything that God has for me because I know it's going to be for my good. And not only is it going to be for my good, but it's going to bless those that are connected to me. We're not talking about that. But I need to experience, not just shout about, I need, yes, I need to experience the promises of God for my life. But the first thing that God says to Abraham is what he said to everybody. And he says two words, and those two words are get out. Get out. Because oftentimes when God makes us a promise to speak something over our lives, we would like to think that we're going to realize it in the comforts of our current situation. Right. Mm. But the reality is, in order for me to experience what God has for me, He's calling me out of something. Right. And so God says to Abraham, you've got to get out if you're going to see what it is that I want to show you. Uh, let me make it plain, 21st century, century vernacular. In order for God to show you Mr. or Mrs. Right, you're going to have to get out. Right. Some of us will have to get out of some wrong relationships. Some of us will have to get out of some bad connections. If you're going to see and experience what God has purposed for your life, you have got to be willing to let go of some things, move from your current position, and get in position to what God has for your life. If I'm going to experience, if you're going to experience, amen, that new house that you said, Just moving 
based off of how he feels, but Abraham is listening to what he has to lead based off of the word of God. When God speaks to Abraham and he tells Abraham to get out, he tells Abraham to get out or to leave on three different levels. Everybody say three different levels. Three different levels. You thought it was just one thing you was going to have to let go of, but can I tell you, sometimes there's a couple of things that are binding us, amen, from the realization of God's promises over our lives. Come on, y'all, talk to me this morning. So, sometimes it's not just how I'm thinking, but sometimes it's the things that I'm engaged in. Amen. So well, not only do I have to change how I think or what I feel about my situation, but I've also got to change how I'm going about performing in my situation. So God tells Abraham, I'm going to try to sit here as long as I can, y'all. God tells Abraham, I need you to get out on three different levels. But what are those levels? Number one, God says you got to leave your country. Everybody say, leave your country. In other words, when he says, leave your country, he's saying you got to get out of this region or this place of your dwelling. Uh, you, you got to leave where you're settling in. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Uh, can I tell somebody that some of us, the reason why we haven't seen what God has for us that's ahead of us is because we're satisfied with where we are. We, we settle for less than my you got it up there. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, but when you begin to look at that map, the Bible tells us that Abraham was living in the country. Uh, he was in the region of Ur. Y'all see Ur down there in the bottom right? He was living in Ur, which was in the land of Mesopotamia. When God spoke to him in Mesopotamia, he said, I need you to leave Ur, and I'm going to take you to a land that I'm going to show you. Amen. So you got to leave your country. Well, when you consider what the Bible tells us about Abraham, when he leaves earth, he doesn't go to Canaan, but the Bible declares that Abraham leaves from earth, yes Lord, following his father, Abraham leaves from earth, and do y'all see Haran up at the top of, of the map there? The Bible declares that they leave, let me just turn that real quick, Genesis chapter number 11. Genesis chapter number 11, verses 31 and 32. Mm. Genesis 11, 31, 32 declares, And Terah, which was Abraham's father, took Abraham his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, or Terah's grandson, Abraham's nephew, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, and Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldeans, <coughs> to go into the land of Canaan and they came into Haran. Haran. Alright. So they left her and they went up to Haran. But what was God's word to Abraham? Get out of the country. So Abraham moved from where they were settling in Ur, but he kept following his father up to Haran. He still wasn't where God wanted him to be. Now this, I'm not making this as an indictment against Abraham, but I want us understand that every promise that God makes over our life, it does come with a process. Right. Oh yeah, I can hear the Holy Ghost say right now, amen, for ye have need of patience, and after you have done the will that you might receive the promise. Right. In other words, we must understand that every one of God's promises comes with a process. Right. So while I heard the promise, I'm trying to sit here, I'm going to sit here, thank you Lord. Amen. While I heard God speak to me Sunday in service and I got excited and I started shouting because I heard God tell me what he was getting ready to do in my life. Amen. I'm not ignorant of the reality that there's still some fine print that is contingent upon my obedience. Oh yeah. He said, Abraham, Abraham, you got to get out of the country. Yes. So amen. Genesis chapter 11 shows us that Abraham got they were settled in in Ur. He got out of his country, amen, and he went to Haran. But the problem is that's not all that God told Abraham to do. All right. All right. He said, get out of your country. And what was the next thing he told him? <laughs> from get away from your kindred and get out of your father's house. That's what some of y'all are right now. You stuck under the limitations of what other folks say you can inherit. You stuck the limitations of your family's pedigree and your family's history. But God said you're going to have to, you got your mind has got to break out of the limitations of what folks say you can have because there's something I want to show. Just tap yourself on the shoulder and say 
yourself that some God wants to show you. Amen. He said you got to get out of the place that you are settled in. Get out of your country. I'm skipping here. And you got to leave your father's house. The Bible declares, amen, in Genesis chapter 11, verses 31 and 32, amen, that Tira, the father of Abraham, took his family, amen, and they went to Haran. But there's something, I believe, that is significant here. For the Bible declares that Abraham and his family stayed in Haran until his father died. I'm just going to sit there right there for a minute. They stayed in Haran until his father died. I need to suggest to somebody today that the only reason you're going, the only way you're going to be able to see what it is God wants to introduce you to in this season is some stuff is going to have to die. That there's some folk you have depended on. That I can hear Isaiah screaming in my ear right now. For something that I needed to see in God and something that God wanted to show me about me and I couldn't realize it till some stuff died. I ain't saying some people gotta die but if you're making people your God you're gonna have to get rid of them and see the only one and truly living God. I'm trying to keep sitting here. Amen. So the Bible, the Bible declares, the Bible declares that amen he goes with his father and he stays in Haran until He comes out of Haran. He comes out of Haran. 
ran and he, he is obedient. But uh, so now we see that Abraham has left, amen, his country. Amen. Abraham has left his father's house. Uh, but there's still something left that God told Abraham he's got to do. And the Bible declares that the Lord told Abraham, you've got to get away from your
raised this morning said, I believe God for the impossible. Yeah. I'm not satisfied in living in mediocrity. When I serve an awesome God, I serve Elohim, the Almighty God. I serve the Lord saving Savior. I serve a God who said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. All they that dwell therein. And I'm tired of being around folk. My God with no expectation. When they serve an all-sufficient God. spirit the other day, amen, Brother King, and I was looking at it, and when I looked at it on one of the maps, one of the maps, when I looked at it, it looked like the land of Ur was already in Canaan, and I said, man, wait a minute, how did it, God, God says to Abraham, I'm getting ready to take you into a land that I'm going to show you, when it looks like he's already in the land, I said, oh man, God, man, that's something big right there, so that feel real good. That sounds real good. Well, when I got here this morning, I began to look at the, the, the Bible map. When I looked at the Bible map, I began to see that Ur was on the other side of the Euphrates River. Ur is in the land of the Mesopotamians. And it's necessary that God gets Abraham out from amongst his kindreds and out of that land. I ain't got time to unpack all of this, but it's necessary. Because the land that Abraham was used to was a heathen land. It was the land in Mesopotamia. It's the land in which we will find the Tower of Babel. Y'all remember the Tower of Babel when Noah came out the ark and God began to settle the earth. The Bible, the Bible declares amen that Noah has three sons by the name of Ham, Shem, Japheth, I believe it is, and the Bible declares amen. Amen that Ham has a son by the name of Cain. And the Bible, the Bible declares amen that the flood Noah had sown a garden, he sown a vineyard, huh? and he drank the wine from the grape that he got out of his vineyard, and he got drunk. Huh? And the Bible, can I just get on through here like I feel it, y'all? Huh? And the Bible declared that after he got drunk, that his son Ham came into the room where Noah was, huh? and he discovered his father's nakedness. Huh? And the Bible declares that the problem that God had with Ham was not that he saw his father's nakedness.
you're not looking closely, it looks like uh, you're where God has promised you to be. Because uh, you're not dealing with the stuff you were dealing with before. Uh, I can hear somebody right now, Sister Jackson, uh, my life is pretty good now. Uh, I'm no longer living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, well, just because you're not living from paycheck to paycheck, uh, it does not mean that you're coming to the fullness uh, of what you to be. Huh? Let me just make it plain now. Huh? Just because you settled in earth huh? and I see how close you are to the land of Canaan, huh? it does not mean because you're close huh? that you're already there. Huh? Ah, and what the Lord began to speak to our hearts as the Canaan huh? is that sometimes the reason why we settle huh? in less than what God is trying to show us huh? is because we have to us that err huh, where Abraham was already settled. Huh, amen. The river Euphrates was an obstacle. Huh, he couldn't see everything that God was going to take it into. Huh, therefore God said, you got to come out of what you're settling in. Huh, you need, yes Lord, you need me huh, to perform eye surgery on you. Huh, now some of you in here this morning, huh, that's something that God has promised over Just 
spoke to the Lord. He said, Lord, I need you to touch his eyes that he might see that there's more for us than there are against us. See God for who He is. I said it. 
I got to move you away from the things that are impairing your vision. Yes, yes. Abraham, I, I would suggest in part, Abraham might have suffered from nearsightedness. Because like some of us, Abraham couldn't see past his family. Yeah. Church, 
this time. If there were ever a time for us to see God high and lifted up, see the manifestation of the promises of God, that time is there. But it is contingent upon our obedience. Do me a favor and grab hands with somebody next to you. I'm not, I'm having an altar call, but I'm, but I'm not having an altar call. Hold hands with somebody next to you. I believe that everybody in here, God wants to do something with. That's right. He created you with a divine purpose in mind. Something he wants to show you. Something he wants to deliver into your life. Something he needs to take out of your life. But it's contingent upon you. There's no shortage in God. It's contingent upon you. This morning somebody needs some courage to do what they know. Did you hear me? To do what they know they need to do. Yes, sir. Somebody not only needs courage. Somebody needs direction to say, Lord, I'm willing, but show me the way you want me to go. Somebody says, Lord, I need you to disassociate me, detach my mind from the limitations of people so that I can be open to what you want to do in my life. I don't know who you're standing next to this morning, but I believe that God has strategically set them next to you, knowing what this message was going to be, and you have the assignment of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to intercede. That we agree. We agree with the word of the Lord. We agree with the promises. For all his promises are yea and amen. Come on, let's squeeze that hand and begin to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you right now. For your goodness and your mercy, we thank you, Lord, for the inheritance that we have in you. Father, we thank you.
you would touch their heart and draw them to the foot of the cross before it's everlasting to the late too late. Right now, I'm asking, there's anybody that's under the sound of my voice that does not know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin? Remember, I told you God can do amazing stuff not with people who understand Him, but with people who simply believe Him.